can make a huge difference in the look and feel of your photographs. If you're shooting RAW, you can pick the white balance you prefer during processing. If you're shooting JPEG, you have to make the decision in camera. The world of digital has made a lot of things easy and white balance is one of them. With film, the only way to change the white balance was with filters over the frontal lens. With digital, it's a lot easier. The light that is produced in digital photos is made up of three colors, red, green, and blue. Any color can be reproduced by mixing parts of these colors. The colors are only recorded properly when the three wave bands are in correct balance. Our brain automatically adjusts these colors in fluorescence, incandescent, and halogen lighting. Most people are not aware of the changes compared to normal daylight. The sensors will pick up on this, and unless the correction is not made, the result will be unnatural colors. The white balance control makes these corrections. The white balance is the amount of blue light to red light emitted by any light source. Green light is ignored as it is in the middle of the spectrum. This is why when we adjust the white balance, we either add red or blue to the photo. Light is measured in degrees Kelvin. The higher the degrees Kelvin, the bluer the color. The lower the degrees Kelvin, the redder it is. A good way to remember this is to think of a flame. A normal flame is red, but as it gets hotter, it goes towards a hot blue flame. These temperatures move from cold, almost a blue color, to warm, a reddish color. We correct the white balance by adding the opposite color to it. If the photo is too warm, too much red in it, then the photo is cooled down by adding blue. If the photo is too blue, too cold, then we add red to it. Auto white balance will generally fix most lighting in the middle range, but once outside this range, you will need to add custom settings. One of the hardest things to understand in photography is that our brain has our own white balance. So whatever light source we see, it automatically adjusts. Photographers should always check their white balance at the beginning of each photo shoot. LCD screens are good for large differences, but because of the resolution is very low, it's difficult to fine tune the white balance. If the white balance is not too far out, an image editing program can correct the imbalance. Shooting in RAW mode will not add any white balance to your photo and it can be added later with the image editing program. You can adjust the white balance in a number of different ways. You can use auto white balance which sets a white balance for you. You can dial it in from the presets, sunny, cloudy, etc. You can input an actual number in degrees Kelvin or you can add a custom white balance by setting the white balance with a card. The presets are usually very accurate and worth to get the right colors. You can also use these presets to add different colors to your shots. You can warm your photo by adding some red tones to a normal scene or cooling another scene by adding blue to it. Setting your own white balance is relatively simple as long as you have the proper card. Many people try to set their white balance using sheets of paper that are not a true white and not getting a true white balance. There is a debate between using a gray card or white card. You can use either. The camera just needs an average value and either will give you that. Some people favor the gray card as a white card can be blown out in the sunlit situations. The white card works better in low light situations. The most important thing is that it's a true white or a true 18% gray. Even if you're shooting raw photos, it's good to take a white balance so you can use this later in post-production. You can just use your eyedropper and Photoshop will correct all the photos for you using your white balance.